Hi guys, it's Nicole and today we've got a little bit different style of a video. Today I'm going to take a deep dive into my love for Dickers and share how they became an obsession and why I think you should try them at least once in your crafting life. I'm going to attempt to keep things somewhat organized, so check the description box below for things like timestamps if you want to hop around to a specific topic or part in the video. A couple years ago, while watching a card making video on YouTube, I saw the creator stack die cut phrases to make kind of like a DIY chipboard type element instead of putting foam adhesive behind it for dimension. When I saw that, a light bulb blew up in my brain and I immediately wanted to try it with alphabet dies. Personally, I've never loved thickers. I kind of thought that they were a little bit on the expensive side and there were just so many options that making a choice was consistently difficult for me. Then there was the added issue of once I started to use them, the remaining letters only allowed for so many options. I often found myself pulling out my meager stash of thickers and becoming frustrated when I liked a certain font or a color, but I didn't feel like the glitter finish of the set I had pulled out would work with that specific layout. Or maybe I had the right finish, but the font wasn't a good fit. Or I would somehow find a good overall fit and get to using them only to figure out that past me had already used up all the A's. A simple solution to this would be to pull out a digital die cutter and cut letters and titles out that way. I've done this for years as well, but I never loved the process. And even though the word or letters are copied and cut repeatedly, they're not actually going to be a smooth stack due to the small in inconsistencies in digital die cutting. It's just part of the process and how the machines cut. Using a manual die cutter and metal dies gives the exact cut every single time with a smooth rounded edge and I was instantly in love with that look. I found I could use up scraps of white cardstock left over from computer printed journaling for my base layers and the top most layer was open to whatever I wanted to use. I could completely customize this layer to fit my specific layout and design choices even to a theme that I don't have matching embellishments for. I was a goner at this point. Ever since then, I have shared my love of these DIY thickers, so lovingly nicknamed Dickers in many, many process videos. I have discussed tips and tricks and favorites within the process videos, but I think it's time for a dedicated look at how I make Dickers and some helpful tips I've learned along the way. Well, let's talk basic supplies. For me, this is the combo that I personally use. First up is a set of alphabet dies, a liquid glue of choice, this one is my favorite, a detail work tool of some kind, and lastly is going to be a sticky mat or some sort of repositionable tape. As far as alphabet dies, my favorite are the scrapbook.com brand. These come in many different font styles, are often on sale, and the bundles offer an even deeper discount. Lawn Fawn dies are also a favorite as they offer some fun and whimsical styles. Alt New and Tim Holtz are also used a lot in my videos. Selecting alphabet dies ultimately is up to you. My advice is to always go for what you like, what you know that you will use. What I like and what I use might be different and that's awesome. I will add that I shop a lot of clearance sales. When I get an email for a warehouse sale, a retirement sale, things like that, I tend to look specifically for alpha sets to save some money on the crafty budget. I have tried some from generic manufacturers found on sites like Timu, AliExpress, and Amazon, and all I can say is to be wary. Check the reviews and buy at your own risk. I have a set that doesn't cut all the way through and I was unable to return it. So like I said, I save money shopping sales and de-stash groups and just kind of keeping an eye on when product is becoming older and I know that the price is going to drop. When it comes to tools for detail work and kind of keeping your fingers out of the glue, again, this will go back to personal preference and how you use tools and what you like. 
I'm showing here some examples of how there are many options available and you might already have something to get you started in your stash. Now, as far as keeping the letters from wiggling around too much, I recommend working on some sort of a sticky surface, especially for those fonts and styles that are kind of difficult to hold in your fingers. Washi tape, post-it notes, low tack tape, they all work great. I've been loving sticky mats designed for cutting with digital die cutting machines as these were already a tool in my room that I had on hand and I know that they work for me. I also love the added benefit of it being see-through and having a grid printed on the mat. This allows me to pick up the title pieces and move them around the layout as a whole while still being able to see how they look and how they're going to fit in the space. Let's go over some different methods and styles of diggers. First up, I'm going to show you a bunch of samples of what I would consider a basic digger. This is going to be two to three layers of white cardstock. I prefer this inexpensive option from Walmart. Anything is going to work here. Scraps are great for this as well. And then the top layer is either a solid color cardstock or more often than not a pattern paper for my personal preference. This is where you can pull papers from your layout to coordinate or contrast with some B-sides to really help the title stand out. If it's a larger or more bold style font, I find it easy enough to just hold them in my hands and stack the layers. I prefer small dots of liquid glue, just enough to hold the letters together and not leak out on the sides. If they have a straight edge, you can tap them on your work surface to line up the edges as well. For smaller or more detail style fonts, I find it easier to assemble them on top of a sticky mat. I start by placing my first layer of white cardstock and then I stack each layer on top, keeping my hands out of the glue and making use of the tools like tweezers, embellishment wands, stuff like that, to pick up each layer and place them down. Then I'll kind of use that either the same tool, the tweezers, the paper piercer to kind of push the letter around, make sure it's lined up and in place. And then I will use the tool to kind of wipe away any excess glue that comes out. So one method to step up your dickers and get a little bit fancy is to pull out those specialty card stocks for that final layer. This is when I like to pull out glitter card stock or maybe something like a shiny gold or a shiny silver, maybe wood grain embossed specialty paper, kind of any of those special card stocks that you may have in your stash. If you are shopping for specialty card stocks, I typically recommend the 6x6 versions. You tend to get a sampling of colors and textures in a cut down size that is super easy to run through your die cut machine in order to cut out letters and small details and things like that. The options to step up and add even more interested dickers are basically endless. Adding hand stitching while a little time consuming to me adds so much added detail and interest to the letters, especially if you have done hand stitching on other areas of your layout. Running the die cuts through an embossing folder will definitely give you some extra texture. This can be done either on a small sheet of paper that you then cut the letters after you've run it through the embossing folder or cut your letters first and then run it through the embossing folder. It's going to give you slightly different results. This is going to again come back to personal preference. Blending ink to create an ombre or even a specific color match, pulling in stencils. You could even layer up the actual die cutting by bringing in things like border punches or border dies to create more details to your letters. I will say that these types of techniques are a little bit easier to achieve on a more bold style of letter. The more like tiny and intricate or delicate letter, the more difficult you're going to find doing things like embossing. You probably won't be able to stitch on them. But again, this is the fun part of Dickers, pulling out different supplies and tools and kind of seeing what you can come up with and customize to your style, your layout, your specific creative process. The last thing that I wanted to kind of cover was how I store my alphabet dies. 
The scrapbook.com branded ones come on this heavy duty double sided adhesive strips and it holds it, it holds the letters really well. After I've used the letters probably six or seven times, I just am kind of tired of fighting that sticky and the ones that I've used over and over again, they kind of stop wanting to stick to the tape and they start falling. So that's typically when I will move it over to a magnetic sheet. I cut these down to fit inside of stamp pockets and I have some of them in the like regular size and then I have some in a larger size. I just kind of figure out if it's a large font and I have upper, lower and numbers, I know that that's kind of going to be a larger envelope. I just kind of base it on how much storage do I need and for me they don't need to be the same size pouches. So I will link anything that I can possibly think of in the description box below. If you have a question that I have not covered in this video, please leave me a comment down below. And if you have tried these, haven't tried them, let me know in the comments. I am excited to share these with you guys and I appreciate your time watching my little TED talk today on how to make dickers.